Good morning, everyone. Welcome to First Baptist Church. If you're visiting with us, you are so very welcome. Let's all stand together. We're going to sing to God be the glory. Great things he hath done. singing this morning. What a great song to begin with, To God Be the Glory. And uh, that's our desire today. We want everything that is done uh, and said here at First Baptist Church to bring honor and glory to God. And uh, through the singing, through everything, that God would be honored and glorified and magnified. And so I hope that's your desire this morning. So I hope you'll sing out with a heart of love for God. And, uh, and then, of course, as we get into the Word of God, that we'll listen attentively for what God would have for us. But it's an exciting day today because today is Vision Sunday here at First Baptist Church, and so today we're going to be revealing uh, the new theme for our church, and then also uh, some exciting things, and we're kind of doing it in two parts. We'll do it a little bit this morning, and then we'll do it a lot tonight, and uh, so it's going to be an exciting day today, and uh, I'm excited about it. I've already had people trying to bribe me. Hey, what's the theme? I want to know before anybody else. No, I'm just kidding. Nobody tried to do that, Um, but it's going to be an exciting day and looking forward to it, and so let's go ahead and pray this morning together and ask the Lord to meet with us and that he would be glorified today. Our Heavenly Father, we do thank you that we can come. Lord, we thank you that we can worship you and just gather together as a body of believers. We thank you for those who are joining us via live stream as well. Uh, Lord, we ask that they too would receive a blessing from the service today. Uh, Lord, from the singing, uh, from the special music, even our time of giving. Uh, Lord, and even through your word, that you would just be glorified in all that is done. And Father, you do deserve the glory. Uh, We think of what you've done for us and in our lives. And Father, there's no one that deserves glory more than you. And so we ask that you would just be magnified today. Lord, meet with us. I pray that you use the service to speak to hearts, encourage us. uh, And Lord, just draw us closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated this morning. The choir is going to sing for us.
Shadows are falling, time marches on. Prophets are echoing, soon Christ will come. Looking into the heart of man, seeking his own. Calling all of the faithful, children come home. Listen for the trumpet, Jesus is coming. Listen for the trumpet, look to the sky. this world of sin come Lord today quickly Jesus come quickly take us away listen for the trumpet Jesus is coming listen for the trumpet look to the Coming again and very soon, very soon. Let's all stand together. To God be the glory. Great things he hath done. Glory to his name. To God. Oh, oh my word. I got lost on my song. I apologize. To God be the glory. Great things he hath done. To God be the glory. Oh, glory to. Oh, my word. I'll get there eventually, folks. I apologize. Here we go. Down at the cross where my Savior died Down where for cleansing from sin I cried There to my heart was the blood applied Glory to His name Glory to His name Glory to His name There to my heart was the blood applied Glory to his name. I am so wondrously saved from sin. Jesus so sweetly abides within. There at the cross where he took me in. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Soul at the 
the Savior's feet. Plunge in today and be made complete. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. There to my heart was the blood of mine. Glory to His name. Good singing, church. Next song is Because He Lives, I Can Face Tomorrow. sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to Amen. What a great song. Because he lives, right? There's nothing we cannot face because he lives. That's wonderful. Well, let me give you a few announcements this morning and a few things. Uh, like I said, today is our Vision Sunday. And so I'll make mention of a few things now, a few things a little bit later, and then 
uh, a lot of things tonight. And so I do want to encourage you back this evening because we'll be going through uh, more of a, an update of what the Lord did this past year in 2020 and some exciting things that we're looking forward to this year and uh, with missions and some other things as well. But uh, just if you have a bulletin there, I uh, just want to remind you of a few things that we have coming up. Of course, this Tuesday is the Ladies of Faith, and so I want to encourage all the ladies uh, to come out to that uh, Bible study at 7 o'clock. And yesterday we had our men's prayer breakfast, and one thing new that we're doing this year is our, uh, our men's devotion that we're going through on Saturdays. And the Ladies of Faith devotion that the ladies are going to be going through are on the same subject And uh, so yesterday we had a great time uh, in the Word of God, and I I know the ladies will as well this coming Tuesday, so I want to encourage all the ladies uh, to come out for that. And then especially if if your husband or wife is going to one or the other, be able to discuss those uh, after you get back and, and say, hey, this is what I learned, or what did you learn, or were you awake while they were talking, you know? Uh, you know, and so just use that as a, as a time to be able to uh, encourage one another there. And so want to make mention of that. And then, of course, uh, a number of different activities and things that we have coming up uh, throughout the month. Um, one thing that we did have to change is the nur- nursery worker appreciation dinner. That is not going to be on January 26th. That will now be on February the 2nd. Uh, so make sure you make note of that. And again, we appreciate all of the the nursery workers that help take care of the young kids and the babies in the back, and uh, what a blessing that is to have uh, ladies and young ladies who are willing to, uh, to help with that. Uh, a couple things that are not in the bulletin, of course, every year our church has to have uh, our uh, annual business meeting, so on January the 24th, Uh, before the Sunday morning service, all of the men uh, will be meeting for our men's meeting, uh, discussing the the business meeting and stuff, and then our church business meeting will be on January the 31st, and so just wanted to make sure that everyone was aware of that. That will be January 24th, we'll have the men's meeting, and then on the 31st, the business meeting. Um, Now, let me tell you about a couple things that we have coming up that I'm excited about as well. Uh, Of course, our Bible Institute is going to be starting back up on February the 1st, and uh, we're offering three classes in the Bible Institute. You don't have to take all three. You can take one. You can take two. uh, You can take all three if you'd like. Uh, But the different classes are New Testament survey, teaching the Bible, and then Bible geography. And uh, so those are going to be great classes. If you would like to know more about them, you can see me, but the classes are just 40 minutes each. Um, we do it on Mondays uh, from 7 o'clock to about 9, 10. That covers all three classes, uh, and we go 12 weeks, and so each class is only $20, so we're, it's not like we're, we're not making anything off of it. You're basically just paying for the books so that you can have the books, um, but just uh, if you're interested in, in learning more uh, about the Bible and things, these are great classes that we offer um, on Monday nights, and so we do need you to Register by January 24th, though. Uh, There is a paper on the back table back here. You can sign up uh, for one, two, or all of them, Uh, but we do need you to register for that by the 24th. And then uh, one thing that I want to kind of put out there a little bit is in April, uh, we'll be having our marriage retreat. And uh, this is going to be an exciting week where we actually have, how many remember Dr. Al Stone? Remember Dr. Stone came a couple years ago to do our revival? He and his wife are coming back and they're going to be doing our marriage retreat as well. And so we're excited about them coming. Um, And the dates of that, um, what are the dates of that? It's April, um, I don't know, is it the 9th and 10th? Hold on, let me pull out my calendar here. I don't want to give you a wrong day. Um... It is the 9th and 10th. Leave it to my wife to know everything that I need to know because that's her right there, right? And uh, so she, she's got it all down. Uh, so the 9th and 10th, and uh, that's going to be an exciting uh, weekend there uh, for our marriage retreat. And so I would encourage you uh, to be thinking about that. And, of course, we'll get a sign-up thing uh, in a few weeks and things as we get closer. But I wanted to let you know about that because that's going to be an exciting week. And I hope as many couples as possible will be able to go to it. I really believe, uh, of course, if this whole COVID thing keeps 
decreasing a little bit. Uh, I think this is going to be one of the largest years we've had with our marriage retreat. We have a number of other churches that are interested in uh, being a part of it as well. In fact, uh, we already have people signing up online uh, all ready to come to it in April um, from other churches and things. So it's going to be a great uh, weekend there. And so I just wanted to make mention of that. Uh, and then uh, two other things, if you'll notice in the bulletin, we've done two things new this year uh, that you'll see in the bulletin. Uh, one, uh, of course, we have done the online giving, but we've also included now text to give. How many of you ever used a text to give? Anybody? One, two, okay. I've never used text to give, right? Uh, but I guess that's one of the new up and coming things to be able to text to give. And so we have text to give. Yay, right? And, uh, and so uh, the information is there in the bulletin. Uh, if you would like to use that or you can use the online or obviously when we have our uh, offering time. But that is available and we'll be uh, giving more options with that. And then uh, we're going to be doing a monthly memory verse. And so the memory verse uh, is going to be at the bottom of the page there. And so every month we're going to have a new verse that we encourage you to memorize. Nobody's going to come and check up on you and see if you memorized it. But I would encourage you to memorize these verses. These are verses that we feel would be good. Uh, so this month's memory verse is Proverbs chapter 20, verses 6 and 7. Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness. Right? That's, that's a true statement right there. But a faithful man who can find the just man walketh in his integrity. His children are blessed after him. And what a great uh, great two verses there. So we encourage you to memorize those, and every month we'll have a new, uh, a new verse that we'll have in the bulletin. So just wanted to uh, remind you of a few things here. Uh, I'll be speaking a little bit more about some things in a few moments, but we're going to have the ushers come at this time, and the McIntyre family is going to come and sing for us during the offering. We'll have our ushers come at this time as we uh, give our tithes and offerings back to the Lord. And just thankful for what God has done in our lives uh, throughout this past year. And uh, definitely looking forward to what God is going to do uh, this year as well. I'm going to ask Brother Andy Koo if he'll come this morning and bless the offering today. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you so much for the opportunity to come today and worship you, Father. And Lord, to learn of you. Father, I pray that you just bless this service. And Lord, I pray that you just bless the pastor as he shares what's on his heart for this year. I pray that you just bless this offering, Lord. I pray that it'll be used for your honor and your glory. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come. I Ah. Uh... 
I come broken to be mended. I come wounded to be healed. I come desperate to be rescued. I come empty to be filled. I come broken to be pardoned by the blood of Christ the Lamb. And I'm welcomed with open arms, praise God. Just as I am. I come broken to be mended. I come wounded to be healed. I come desperate to be rescued. I come empty to be filled. I come guilty to be pardoned by the blood of Christ the Lamb. And I'm welcomed with open arms, praise God, just as I am. Praise God, just as I am. Amen. What a beautiful song and beautiful message as well. Well, if you have your Bibles this morning... Open them just open them <laughs> you got your Bibles open are you where I am maybe who knows well before we get into a little bit more about the uh, the theme and the message this morning I do want to uh, just uh, again, tonight we'll be dealing a lot more with um, kind of a, a year uh, update with what happened uh, last year with our church and what God did and just many, many wonderful things. And, and then obviously looking forward to some great things this year. Um, but we do want to say this, the, the Lord has truly blessed our church this past year. And when we think of um, all that happened, of course, with the whole uh, COVID-19 thing, and of course, we're still going through that. But um, I know many pastors and many churches that um, are struggling, and uh, because um, Christians uh, not wanting to come back to church and things like this, and, um, but I'm so thankful that God, uh, in fact, through this whole 2020 COVID-19 thing, uh, God blessed our church, and, and our church uh, grew through this time. And uh, it's exciting to see what God has done and, and really just looking forward to seeing what God is going to do uh, this year. And um, no doubt, uh, in fact, I was just yesterday with uh, Brother Jake and Brother Shane who work with our teens and uh, we're going to be splitting our junior high and senior high uh, and, and making two classes out of that. And so we were trying to find some place uh, in the mission house where we could put the junior high and uh, to try to, to split those classes. But uh, the rooms over there are very small. Uh, we thought about just putting them out in the garage, but we, we were more concerned about Miss Rachel, um, you know, and, you know, her being pregnant and things. So we thought, well, we probably better not just stick them out in the garage. Uh, so we're, we're trying to make one of the rooms there uh, into a room where the, the junior high can be able to meet. And so that's exciting to be able to see them growing and now having to split into two uh, two classes, but uh, we are running out of room, <laughs> uh, which is a great problem, but uh, be praying about that. We are really praying about what God would have us do uh, this year uh, in the area of building or finding another building and things, and so I hope you'll be praying about that because uh, the Lord's just really blessed, and, and we're moving forward for Christ in these areas, and uh, it's exciting to see what the Lord's going to do. Um, we're, we're working this year even to develop our second phase of our discipleship course, uh, we've already gone, we've developed the first phase that uh, many people have gone through, are going through now, and I'll, I'll mention more about that tonight, but this year we're going to be working on developing the second phase uh, of our discipleship in the area of serving and things, and so I'm excited about that as well, and uh, seeing folks that will go through that. And then really just trying to keep missions uh, again before our church. Our church is a very uh, missions-minded church and a, a church that has a heart for missions. And uh, I'll talk more about our, our missions giving tonight. And uh, you'll be amazed to see what God has done in the past seven years uh, in the area of our church and with missions giving. But 
uh, just trying to keep missions before our people. And I know we put our, the prayer letters on the back there, and uh, many times uh, some folks will go back and read them, but trying to get, get them more in front of our church folks. And one thing we're working at trying to do is uh, every week we're going to try to get some of the, the missionary prayer letters, maybe four or five missionary prayer letters, and we're going to be sending them out in an email to all of our folks in the church so they can just read them right there in your inbox. And every week it'll be different ones, uh, but just being able to know more about what's going on with our missionaries and just being able to keep uh, missions uh, before us because obviously we understand that missions is the heartbeat of God. Uh, if it was not for missions, none of us would be saved. Uh, if it was not for someone going and telling us or inviting us or something like that. And so uh, missions is so important. And so uh, we'll be working to try to do some things like that and uh, even giving some uh, better reports on missionaries on Sunday nights when we have our missionary of the week and things. And so just a, a number of exciting things that we are, we're looking forward to doing uh, this year. Uh, and so I would, in, again, encourage you to come back tonight at, uh, at 6 o'clock because we're going to be talking a lot more about this. And uh, this morning, I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to reveal the theme this morning, uh, but I'm going to preach on it tonight. And so, uh, again, I really encourage you to be back tonight uh, because this is really going to be the theme for our church this year. And, uh, and so if you have the Bible and you have the Bible open, now uh, if you would like to turn to the book of Colossians, in the book of Colossians in chapter number 2, in Colossians chapter number 2, Colossians chapter number 2, and we'll begin reading in verse number 6, Colossians chapter number 2. Verse number six, he says, As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Now, I'll be honest, there's a, a lot of, uh, of uh, here in these two verses and a lot of different areas we could go, but as I began to pray about what uh, our theme would be for, for this year of 2021, the Lord just really began to draw my attention to, to a phrase here at the beginning of verse number 7, rooted and built up in Him. Rooted and built up in Him. And uh, I believe that's God's desire for Christians. And so, uh, especially after what we've gone through this past year and things, I think it's important that we kind of step back and make sure that we are rooted in Christ. And so our theme this year for 2021 is going to be that theme of rooted in Christ. And uh, we, there we go, there's the rooted in Christ theme. And uh, it will be taken here from Colossians chapter 2 in verse number 7, rooted and built up in Him and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. So tonight I'm going to be preaching a message on rooted in Christ and how, why that is so important for Christians. And uh, so I, again, I encourage you to be back tonight. We do have the yearly calendars also as well that have our theme on it. And so we want to make sure that every home uh, gets one of these as you leave today. It has our theme rooted in Christ on it. Uh, and it has all of the yearly uh, events and activities, uh, the major ones that you can take and put that on your fridge or somewhere that way you can be reminded of what's coming up. Uh, of course, sometimes uh, we do have to uh, change certain things or whatever. And so already, as I mentioned this morning, we did have to change the uh, nursery worker appreciation dinner. But other than that, everything is still the way it's supposed to be on the calendar so far. Uh, of course, last year we had to uh, cancel a lot of things that were on our calendar because of COVID-19 and everything. Uh, but make sure you pick one of those up as you're leaving today. Put that on your fridge or uh, somewhere where you can be reminded of, of that theme and just be praying about that this year. You say, well, what are you going to preach on this morning then if you're not preaching on the theme? Well, we're actually going to be taking the book of Colossians uh, because that's where our theme is coming from. And Colossians is one of the shorter books that Paul writes of the epistle letters. Um, but Colossians is a very, very powerful book for the church, and it's something that is in great need for today. And so we're going to actually be going through the book of Colossians uh, on Sunday mornings, and so this morning, that's where we're going to start. We're going to start here in Colossians in chapter 1, and we're going to be looking at verses 1 and 2, 
as we go through this study in the book of Colossians. As we begin in Colossians chapter 1, verse number 1 and 2, it says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, and Timotheus, our brother, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ, which are at Colossae, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray together. Father, again, we do thank you that we can come this morning and worship you. Lord, we ask now that as we open your word, use your word to speak to our hearts. And Lord, even as we think of this theme this year of being rooted in Christ, Lord, we would truly have that desire. Uh, Lord, there are so many things that come into our life that can cause us to, to look away uh, from Christ. But Father, I pray you'd help us to be rooted in him. And uh, Lord, I pray that you'd use the message this morning to speak to hearts. May we draw closer to you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, Colossians is a very interesting book. It's a very interesting church. If you study about the church of uh, Colossae, uh, one of the interesting things about the church of Colossae, even though Paul is writing to it, is that Paul actually did not start the church of Colossae. Um, I know many times we think because Paul is writing a letter to this church that he helped start and establish, but Paul actually never went to Colossae. Uh, Now, I do have a map, if I could have the map thrown up there, just so you get an idea of uh, where these things are at. And this is kind of, this is what we would call Asia Minor, what the Bible refers to as Asia Minor, or what would be currently in our day today known as Turkey. I mean, you know Turkey, right? You had some of that for Thanksgiving, right? Uh, this is actually the country of Turkey, all right? Uh, and we can zoom in a little bit more uh, on the map here and really get an idea of where Colossae's at. And so you can see some of these, uh, some of these uh, cities and towns are familiar. You have Ephesus and where Paul went and uh, uh, worked there. And of course, the, the letter to the Ephesian church is there. You have Philadelphia. You have uh, Antioch. Uh, that's the Antioch Pisidia. Uh, you have Persia there. And then right in the middle, you have these three uh, cities that are kind of located right there. Uh, one, the one is called Hierapolis. The one is Laodicea. And the other is Colossae, and these are right next to the river Lycus there. Um, And so Colossae is the the church that, or the the city that this church is in that Paul is writing to. And if you study, you'll find that Paul is uh, is actually, as he's writing this letter, he is in uh, prison in Rome, but Paul was actually never able to uh, to go to this church. In fact, we find in chapter 2, in verse number 1, he says, For I would that ye knew what great conflict I have for you and for them at Laodicea, and as many as have not seen my face in the flesh. And so Paul says, look, I've never been there. Uh, Paul had been to Laodicea, uh, but he had never been to Colossae. And, and so Paul says, look, I, I would desire to come, but obviously at this time he was not able to because uh, of his imprisonment. Um, Colossae, the city and the church, is not mentioned anywhere in the book of Acts. Uh, again, you find many of these other places that Paul goes to mention, but Colossae is not uh, because he had never been there. But one thing that we do know about the church of Colossae is Paul had heard of something very special about this church. In verse number four of chapter one, he says, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which ye have to all the saints. Even though Paul had not been to this church, Paul had heard of this church, and he had heard of their faith. He had heard of their faith, and uh, how remarkable it was that even though uh, he had not been there, this church was growing, and their faith was was getting stronger. It's interesting that uh, the church of Colossae was actually started as a result of Paul's ministry in Ephesus. So Paul had ministered in Ephesus, as we saw there on the map, that was kind of close to the Mediterranean Sea there, and Paul had ministered in Ephesus for three years. He had stayed in Ephesus for three years and teaching and preaching and discipling, and it was through that ministry there that uh, it seems that a couple of men came to know Christ. Uh, If you go back with me to Acts chapter 19, in Acts chapter 19, we're not going to read all of of 19 and 20 where Paul is working there uh, in Ephesus but in Acts chapter 19 in verse number 10 
It says, and this continued by the space of two years, so that all they which dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. So think about this. Paul is ministering here, and he's been in this uh, school of Tyrannius for two years. He had already been there for some time. He had been kicked out of the synagogue, and they had tried to find another place to, to preach and to worship together. And so finally they find the school of Tyrannius, where they allow them to meet for two years at this school. And through the ministry of Paul here in Ephesus, notice what it says here. So that all they which dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. Now again, if we could have that map uh, brought back up there just for a second, think about this. Where is Ephesus? Ephesus is clear over here. If you were looking on the map here, it's over on the left. But yet, all of this area that you see is part of what was considered Asia at that time, that Asia Minor. And so, as Paul is in Ephesus and people are coming and uh, Paul is witnessing to them and the church is growing there and people are getting saved and then they're leaving and going back to wherever they came from, the Word of God begins to go over all of Asia through the ministry that Paul had here in Ephesus. Ephesus. And it seems that there were two men that came to Christ here in Ephesus. One by name of Epaphras, if you go back to Colossians in chapter 1, because again, this is just kind of setting the stage, setting the story for this letter that Paul is writing to Colossae. What, what was this church and where was this church and why is Paul writing to this church? And so we find in chapter 1, verse number 7, he says, As ye also learned of Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is for you a faithful minister of Christ. And so this man, Epaphras, had come somehow to Ephesus, and he had heard the gospel, and Epaphras had accepted Christ. There was also another man that had accepted Christ, if you hold your place in Colossians here, and go back to the book of Philemon. This is the shortest book that Paul writes in uh, Philemon. In fact, there really aren't any chapters. It's just 25 verses. And so in Philemon, as this letter is written to this man Philemon, in verse number 19, he says, I, Paul, have written it with mine own hand. I will repay it, albeit I do not say to thee how thou owest unto me even thine own self besides. So what Paul is saying is, uh, Philemon, remember, it was through me that you came to know Christ. And so Epaphras and Philemon had been in Ephesus during the time of Paul's teaching there. Uh, during that time of three years he was there, they had come to Christ. And then they leave Ephesus and they go back to where they came from. Well, where are they from? They just happen to be from a little town called Colossae. They're from a place called Colossae. They're kind of in the, in the heart of Asia Minor. And these men returned, and they did something really incredible. They were not apostles. Uh, they were not deacons. They were not, uh, you know, they had not been sent off to Bible college and, and did all these things. But these two men, Epaphras and Philemon, went back to Colossae, and they began to do something remarkable. They began to tell others about Jesus Christ. You say, what's so remarkable about that? Well, unfortunately, in our day and age in which we live, a lot of Christians are not telling people about Jesus Christ. And that's sad because that is what we as Christians are to be doing. We're to be telling others what Jesus Christ has done for us. And that's what they did. They went back to Colossae and they began to tell others about Jesus Christ. And here's what is remarkable about, about this. As they began to tell others about Jesus Christ, a church is started in Colossae. A church is started. Now again, Paul is not there starting this church. Peter is not there starting this church. But these men who had come to know Christ as their Savior go back to Colossae and begin to start this church as they reach more people for Christ. In fact, eventually, and again, we don't have time to go into all of this, but Philemon has a son. And Philemon's son's name is Archippus. And eventually, as we'll study through the book of Colossians here, and we can look in chapter 4 in verse number 17 here, we find that Archippus becomes the pastor of the church of Colossae. In Colossians chapter 4, verse 17, And say to Archippus, Take heed to the ministry which thou hast received in the Lord, that thou fulfill it. 
Archippus becomes the pastor. He's, he was Philemon's son. Philemon had gotten saved. He comes back and tells his family about Jesus Christ. His son gets saved. His wife gets saved. She's mentioned also in Philemon as well. But Archippus gets saved as well. He begins to learn about Christ. And uh, we don't know exactly what his age was. Maybe he was a, a young man, maybe in his 20s or 30s or something like that. But uh, begins to grow in faith. And Archippus becomes the pastor of the church in Colossae. And so you have uh, Epaphras and Philemon uh, that had a love for souls and then Archibus becomes the pastor of the church here in Colossae and even Epaphras himself uh, had a great desire to see people uh, come to know Christ as their savior he was a great soul winner it says in chapter 4 in verse number 12 Epaphras who is one of you a servant of Christ saluteth you always laboring fervently for you in prayers that ye may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God watch this verse 13 for I bear him record that he hath a great zeal for you and them that are in Laodicea and them in Hierapolis Epaphras came, comes back to Colossae he helps get the church started but he says I'm not just content with reaching our city amen he says, I'm not just content with reaching people in our city. There are other cities that need to hear the gospel. There are other cities nearby that they too need to know Jesus Christ as their Savior. And he had a zeal even to reach those cities around him, Hierapolis and, and Laodicea as well. And so we find the church in Colossae not being started by uh, an apostle or a great preacher, but simply by two men who came to know Christ and went back to their home and began telling others of what happened to them. Now, as the church began to grow, they began to have a few issues. Uh, not so much in the church, but from outside the church. False teachings and things began to come in. And one of these is that they were dealing with is called Gnosticism. Gnosticism. Uh, it is those who really, they think they know everything. You know, have you ever met, ever met someone like that? They just think they know everything. They know everything about everything, and they know why everything is everything, right? I mean, that's just, they know it all, right? Well, Gnosticism has to do with this idea about knowing basically everything about the deep things of God. And let me tell you something. When someone thinks that they can know everything there is to know about the deep things of God, they have just proven what a fool they are. Yes, God wants us to know him deeper, but when we think that somehow we have reached this level that we don't need to grow anymore, that we have come to this level of super spirituality that we don't need anything else because we know it all, uh, we have a problem. And that's what was happening with these Gnostics. They, in fact, they taught that you could have such a close relationship with God that you would achieve spiritual perfection. Spiritual perfection. But, <laughs> as the case with so many religions, to achieve this, you had to adhere to their teachings and the ceremonies that they prescribed. In other words, you had to do what they said, and only they would be able to be the judge of whether you had reached spiritual perfection or not. Can I tell you something this morning? Not one of us can determine whether someone is growing spiritually or reaching that spirituality where God wants them to be. Only God is the judge of that. Because every person grows differently in Christ. And as we're going to see, and as we have this theme this year of rooted in Christ, how important it is to have those roots in Christ. But as we'll see through this book, this book really gives us this picture of that we are complete in Christ. We're complete in Christ. In fact, chapter 1 deals with the sufficiency of Christ, dealing with that Christ is enough. And that's the message I want to preach this morning, that Christ is enough. Christ is enough. As we look at verse 1 this morning, we'll find something that is repeated in almost all of Paul's letters. Notice he says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. Notice that phrase, the will of God. The most important thing that we find in Paul's life was doing the will of God. Paul wanted to make sure that he was doing God's will. And as we begin this study on the book of Colossians, we have to ask ourselves the same question. 
Is the will of God the most important thing in my life? You say, why is that question so important? Because if God's will is important, then we will find that Christ is enough. But when Christ and when God's will is not as important, then we will find in our life that Christ is not enough. And that's when we start reaching out and grasping for so many other different things because Christ is not enough. So I want us to look this morning at the really just two things, and I know uh, as we've kind of Vision Sunday is always a hard day because there's so much to try to fit into it. And so as we look this morning, I really just want to look at two things. Two things, right? When we think about God's will and is Christ enough, I want us to notice, first of all, that Christ is enough, number one, in salvation. In salvation. How was Paul able to call these people in Colossae whom he had never seen brethren? I mean, he calls them brethren here, right? He says, to the saints and faithful brethren. Yet he's never seen these people before. He says, I've never seen you, you've never seen me, other than maybe just uh, Philemon and Epaphras. He says, but you are brethren. You're my brothers. How was Paul able to do that? Because, and notice, they were in Christ. He says, brethren, he says, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ. That's an important phrase, in Christ. They were not in religion. It was not that they were brethren because they were in church. It was not that they were brethren because they were in the commandment-keeping system. No. They were brethren because they were in Christ. Period. That's it. Because they were in Christ. You say, well, how does someone, how does someone get in Christ? Well, I think, I think if you look at Colossians chapter 2, verse number 6, as we read this morning, he says, As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord. How do we get in Christ? The only way we can get in Christ is by receiving Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. There is no other way to be able to be in Christ. Salvation is not based upon what we can do to please God. You see, again, the the Gnostics were saying you have to reach this level of spiritual perfection for God to be able to accept you. You have to do all of these things. You have to do all of these rituals. You have to do all of this different stuff. And then God is able to accept you. And Paul says, no, I'm sorry, that's not accurate. That's not biblical. The only way that God will accept anyone is if they are in God. Christ they're in Christ it's interesting the Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 7 in verse number 21 he says Jesus says many will say to me in that day Lord Lord have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name have cast out devils and then I'm in thy name done many wonderful works and Jesus says then will I profess unto them depart from me ye that work iniquity I never knew you Wait a minute, weren't these people religious? No doubt. Weren't they probably going to church every Sunday? No doubt. Weren't they probably reading their Bible? No doubt. But Jesus said, I never knew you because their whole system of trying to be acceptable to God was all about what they were doing. And Jesus says, I cannot accept that. The only way that God is able to accept us is if we are in Christ. That's why Jesus again says in John chapter 6 and verse number 40, This is the will of Him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on Him may have everlasting life. He said it's those that believe on Him who have everlasting life. In John chapter 1 and verse number 12, he says, But as many as received Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on His name. 
You see, the church of Colossae was having some problems in that there were other groups around saying, hey, it's, it's okay that you're believing in this guy Jesus, but here's what you really have to do. It's okay that you're believing in Jesus, but here's what you have to do. You've got to go back and keep the law, or you've got to keep these rituals, and you've got to do A, B, C, D, and you've got to do all these things, and then you'll be able to be accepted by God. Wait a minute. No. Christ is enough. If there is anything more than Christ, we have a big problem. If there's anything more that we have to do that Christ has not already done, we are sunk. We're sunk. Because Jesus Christ was perfect. He was perfect and His sacrifice was perfect. And now you're trying to tell me that that the perfect sacrifice of Jesus Christ was not sufficient enough to, to... to satisfy God, that now I, who am a sinner, who am lost, who am imperfect, somehow there's something that I can do that can be added to make what he did better? Think about the logic of that. That doesn't even make sense. This is what Paul is saying. Hey, let me tell you something. Christ is enough. When you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, that's all that it takes to come to know God. That's all that it takes to be able to put your faith and trust in Christ so that you can know that one day your home is in heaven. That One day when when we take our last breath here on this earth and in this body, the very next breath, although I don't even know if it's a breath, the very next thing that we will see is the glory of God. Because we'll be in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. We'll be in the presence of God Himself. Why? Because I was good? Because I did all these things right? No. Because I was in Christ. And my friend, today, if you're here or you're watching via live stream, there is only one way of salvation. And that is to be in Christ. There's only one way that you can know for sure that heaven is your home. There's only one way that you can know that your sins are forgiven, and that is to be in Christ. All throughout Scripture, just as we've read, but as many as received Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name. There's nothing that you and I can do to satisfy a holy and righteous God because Jesus Christ has already done it for us. And all we have to do is receive it by faith. To repent of our sins and put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And we, just as Paul says, to these brethren who are in Christ, we can be in Christ. You think about the second thing we want to see here this morning. As Paul is talking about the will of God. The will of God is so important for a Christian. Why was Paul... An apostle. He says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ. But notice he says, by the will of God. Paul was not an apostle because he chose to be one. Paul was an apostle because Jesus Christ chose him to be one. Paul was an apostle because it was God's will for him. No doubt Paul had already had a great resume among the Jews. When you think of all his his resume that he lists there in Philippians about uh, being born a a Jew, being born of the tribe of Benjamin, circumcised the eighth day, and uh, the Pharisees, and keeping the law, and all of these different things, he gives his resume. Paul literally could have been anything that he wanted to be. But God had another plan for him. And that was to be an apostle of Jesus Christ. What's really interesting is we actually see Paul's attitude towards God's will for him. Many times, so many Christians are afraid of God's will. I'm afraid to do God's will because it might be something that I don't want to do. I I don't want to really know God's will because I've got my plans already set up and this is the direction I want to go. And so I, I don't know if I really want to know God's will because it might mess up what I've got planned. And even Paul's name shows us the attitude that he had. You see, when Paul was on the road to Damascus, what name did Jesus call him? Anybody know? He says, Saul, Saul, 
Why persecutest thou me? Saul. What name does he use here? He uses the name Paul. He does not use the name Saul. He uses the name Paul. And some have said it's just used interchangeably. But one of the things that I found very interesting is that in every epistle that Paul writes, you go to the book of Acts and you will find his name also referred to as Saul many times. But when you look at all of the epistles that he writes, he refers to himself as Paul. Everyone, just like here, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ. Paul, Paul, Paul. It's interesting because when you look at what the name Paul means, Saul, man, Saul had a regal connotation as it was the, the, the name of the, the Jews' first king. But the name Paul means little one, humble. You think about Saul before he came to know Christ and it was all about him it was all about what he was trying to do and how he was trying to impress God with everything that he was doing and when he comes to know Christ and as he begins to understand who Christ is and who he is and he begins to understand that Christ is enough it's Paul Because when Christ is enough, I can be little. When Christ is enough, it's not about me anymore. It is now about Him. And even in the the, the attitude that we find about God's will, this is God's will. Hey, look, yes, I had a, a great resume, but you know what? It's not about me, it's about Him. Before Christ, it was all about Saul. After Christ, it was all about Christ. He didn't have to be big enough to impress God because Christ is enough. And because Christ was enough for him, it didn't matter what God had for his life. Remember, think, Paul is writing this letter. Where is he writing from? He's writing from a Roman jail. He's a prisoner in Rome. And he's saying what? Christ is enough. You see, many times we think Christ is only enough when our circumstances are good. Christ is only enough when everything is going the way we want them to go. But Paul is saying, no, let me tell you something. Sitting from a Roman cell, as a prisoner in Rome, that I, Paul, the little one, It's not about me. It's about Jesus Christ. That Christ is enough. He is all sufficient. Whatever it was, Paul was willing to say, if that's what God wants for me, that's what I'm willing to do. If it was making tents the rest of his life, then Christ was enough. If it was sitting in prison, Christ was enough. If it was preaching the gospel around the world, Christ was enough. Why would Paul be able to say that? Because he was exactly where God wanted him to be. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. Paul was doing exactly what God had called him to do. There were times, as we read, that Paul says, Hey, I know how to abound and I know how to be abased. I know how to have much, and I know how to have little. But what's he saying? Christ is enough. And I believe as we go through this book of Colossians, as we see the the sufficiency of Christ, and we begin to see who we are and who Christ is, that we will be able to come to the same conclusion that Paul came to and say, no matter what I'm going through, Christ is enough. If God's will for my life is important, then Christ is enough. 
What is so sad to see, though, is so many that call themselves Christians that Christ is not enough. Christ is not enough. They have to have something else because they're not concerned about what God's will for their life is. May I ask you a question this morning? Is the will of God important to your life? Not not the preacher's life. Not your husband's life. Not your wife's life. Not your children's life. Is the will of God important to your life? When it is, when it is God's will that we seek more than anything else, we will come to the understanding that Christ is enough. Christ is enough. That's all I need. That's all I ever will need. Because He is enough. With our heads bowed and our eyes closed, every head bowed, every eye closed, no one looking about this morning, there is great power in peace when you know that you are in God's will. The peace that comes with it to be sitting in a Roman prison not blaming God, saying, I'm an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. And church in Colossae, let me tell you something. Christ is enough. My friend, is Christ enough in your life? Or are we always seeking after the next thing? There's got to be something more. I've got I've to have a better job, and I've got to have better this, and I've got to have better that, and we're seeking satisfaction in all of those things instead of coming back to the Word of God and saying, God, what is Your will for my life? And Lord, may I be content in Your will what You would have for me. And when we are in the center of God's will, we will find that Christ is enough. Maybe you're here this morning and you say, Pastor, I've never accepted Christ. I've I've been trying to be a good person. I've been going to church and I've been reading my Bible and I've been doing many of these things that you spoke of, but I do not know if I died. I do not know where I would go. I I hope I would go to heaven, but I can honestly say this morning, that I am not sure where I would go. My friend, nobody is looking about this morning. Every head is bowed, every eye is closed. I'm not going to embarrass you, don't want to call you out, but I'm very concerned for you. And I would like to pray for you this morning. If you're here this morning, you say, Pastor, that's me. I'm not sure where I would go if I was to die. Would you just slip your hand up and put it right back down? Nobody's going to come to you. I'm not going to call you out. I just want to pray for you. Just slip it up and put it right back down. Pastor, pray for me. I'm honestly not sure where I would go if I die. And Christian, can I ask you this morning? Is Christ enough? Is Christ enough? More than anything else, We could say, all I need is Christ. Nothing else, nothing more. Is He enough? Father, I pray that You bless the invitation. Lord, may You use it to speak to hearts. May You draw us closer to You. Lord, as we draw closer to You, we would come to that realization that You are enough. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. With our heads bowed and eyes closed, we'll just stand to our feet quietly this morning. The piano is just going to play softly. Maybe this morning God has spoken to your heart about something. Maybe it's the will of God for your life. Is God's will the most important thing? Or is your will
Is Christ enough? Or is it still all about what you want and desire from life? Oh, my friend, I can tell you when we find God's will and we're doing God's will, you'll find that He is enough. It doesn't matter what's going on around us. It doesn't matter what our society is going through. He's enough. We just look to Him. God bless you. You may be seated. Uh, We're going to have a short video announcements about some things, and we'll come back and we'll dismiss. I am so glad you were able to join us this morning. Here are a few announcements to let you know about the upcoming events here at First Baptist Church. Our First Ladies of Faith Bible Study of 2021 will be meeting on January 12th at 7 p.m. right here at First Baptist Church. Here you will find and enjoy warm fellowship, fun games, and time together in the Word of God. Hoosier Hills Baptist Camp is hosting a teen overnight activity on January 29th through the 30th. If you have a teen attending, we will be meeting here at the church on that Friday at 4 p.m. If you have any questions about this event, please talk to Jake and Leanna Naus. The spring semester for the First Baptist Institute will resume on February 1st. Each Monday night from 7 p.m. to 9.10 p.m., we offer three classes that will help you learn more about the Bible and strengthen your relationship with the Lord. New Testament survey, teaching the Bible, and Bible geography are the topics that will be covered this semester. Cost for each class is $20, and you must register by January 18th. You can find the sign-up sheet in the back of the auditorium on your way out. There are many unsung heroes working tirelessly behind the scenes to help us have a wonderful time here at FBC. We are so thankful for all of those who volunteer in the nursery ministry. We will be hosting a nursery worker appreciation dinner on February 2nd to thank our nursery volunteers for the fantastic work they do each week. On February 12th, we will have a special evening for all couples. Our Valentine's Banquet will be a fun time of great food and encouragement. The cost is $25 per couple. Child care will be provided for your children as well. Please see Heidi McIntyre to purchase a ticket for this event. Thank you so much for attending First Baptist Church. I pray that our services were a blessing to you and that you were encouraged from the message you heard this morning. Please remember to visit our church website and Facebook page to stay up to date on events taking place here at FBC. I can't wait to see you again at our next service. Amen. We'll stand together. Of course, also don't forget on your way out today, uh, we do want you to pick up one of the uh, yearly calendars that has the theme and also many of the events taking place throughout this year uh, in, in the church. And of course, we'll be back tonight, 6 o'clock. Uh, we're going to continue uh, talking about uh, the theme uh, rooted in Christ and uh, a specific message on that. And then also some uh, exciting updates from last year and some things we're looking forward to this year as well. So we'll be back tonight at 6 o'clock for the evening service. All right. Let's go ahead and be dismissed in a word of prayer and just thank the Lord uh, for what he's done for us today. And uh, let me ask if Brother B.J. Price would dismiss us in prayer, please.